All right, so New York City schools, they reached another milestone as an estimated 300,000 students returned to schools for in-person learning yesterday. It's a major step for the largest school system in the country, which is crippled by a shortage of teachers. It's going to take time to get them all to the level we want to get them to because it's an unprecedented and massive endeavor. But I have total faith in our educators that we will get there and be able to provide a great school year for our kids. So New York isn't the only city trying to balance the safety needs of students and teachers with the benefits of in-person learning. Nobody knows that more than Charlie Wilson, who serves as the president of the National School Boards Association. So good morning to you, Charlie, on such an important topic yeah. here. Good morning, Dan. I'm so, happy to be here with you with a seven-time Emmy Award winner. Well, thank you very much. I, clearly, you did your research. All right, so you took office in April, sir, at the height of the pandemic. And here we are five months later with nearly half of students across the country doing remote learning, right? So I have to ask you, when you look at the country compared with New York City, how do you rate it? It varies widely from school district to school district across the country. Uh, each school district with its locally elected school board members has to make the call as to whether it is safe to do in-person learning. For example, uh, a few weeks ago, I was talking with a school board member from rural Western Kansas, and they have not had a COVID-19 case since April. And so they're all in person. Uh, last week, I was talking to a school board member from Arizona. COVID-19 is spiking there mm -hmm. and they are all remote. So it varies. Uh, based upon the situation for each school district with safety, the safety of our students, the right. safety and of our teachers. Indeed, staff, it's going to be different, Charlie, in different areas. But the head of the principal's union here in New York is asking the state, in fact, to step in and take over the school system. Is that a good idea? Absolutely not. Uh, the genius of our educational system in America is the locally elected school board member. I'm a law professor at Ohio State, and I teach education law and education policy, mm -hmm. and I've studied state takeovers of school districts, and there is not a single example of it working. I believe it's best to leave it, as we have in this country, uh, throughout the country, with locally elected school board members. But why doesn't it work? Yeah. What are the pitfalls? The pitfalls are, you, first of all, you lose democracy. The local stakeholders, the local teachers, the local voters, the local teachers lose control. It becomes part of a big bureaucracy and you lose that sense of doing what's best for this community. So, Charlie, let me ask you this, because some students we know are struggling with remote learning, falling behind, right? We cover this each and every day with the anxiety about being back in a classroom. But there are parents, and help to put this in perspective, who need to return to work, right? So they look at this and say, I need my child back in a classroom. So how long are most school boards opting to keep remote learning? Because that's the, that's the question right now for so many, for so many parents. It's critical that uh, we understand, and every school board member understands this, that every student is best off in a classroom. Academically, it's critically important for the student's social and emotional learning. Schools are always the safest place to be. And as you point out, it's really important for parents who rely on schools to provide a safe place for their child during the day as they work. But I just went on so, the flip side, Charlie, and I'm sorry to interrupt you. On the flip side, when you look at the numbers, and specifically here in New York, we have like nine different communities now that are spiking. Would you think the school is the safest place for that child? That's a decision has to be balanced with the local uh, board of uh, public health. And it, it varies differ differently. Uh, the NSBA and all school board members uh, agree with the uh, American Academy of Pediatricians, mm -hmm. which is that every school student has to be in school as soon as it's safe. Whether it's safe though, is a public health decision right uh, and it also has to be made with the input of our teachers they understand their classroom they understand the layout of their building as to whether it's safe or not yeah and i just very quickly i'm going to touch on those teachers because there is a teacher shortage is there anything that your organization is doing to help with that very good point uh, the teacher shortage is being exacerbated by uh, the pandemic we are seeing across the country 
increasing numbers of teachers in their late 50s and 60s taking early retirement. So it's being exacerbated mm -hmm. by the pandemic. Our organization has been concerned about teacher, uh, NSB has been concerned about teacher shortages for, for some time. Our Center for Public Education is, has issued several reports on this. Just last week, our Council of Urban Boards of Education had its annual conference and several breakout sessions were focused on that. Got the it. critical thing in teacher shortage are two, there are two critical things. Number one, we've got to retain our teachers. We've got to invest in retaining our teachers that is critically important. Yeah. And secondly, we must honor our teachers. Uh, right. Teaching. Charlie, I'm sorry. We are absolutely out of time. We appreciate your insight this morning. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you very much. Yeah, Charlie, thank you. It. Take care.